All right, in this video, we're gonna discuss uh, if you're in a situation where your pump control box overloads are continually tripping. So the QD control box, which I've got behind me, doesn't have overloads, uh, the overload reset buttons in it. Uh, so that wouldn't necessarily be a situation that you run into with this box. But as you get into one and a half horsepower and larger, uh, that's when you start to have those overloads appearing on the underside of the box. Um, so we're gonna talk about some of the different conditions that are gonna cause those overloads to trip out and uh, what you can do to kind of remedy the situation. So the first thing that you're gonna wanna do is ensure that you've got proper voltage getting to the control box. And you would do that by uh, taking the face off of the control box, using your voltmeter and reading the voltage at the inside the box. Uh, it is recommended that uh, what you do when you do test the voltage is actually take, uh, take and turn the breaker off, of course, and then uh, unhook the wiring and then test the wires uh, while they're not connected to the control box just to ensure that you're not getting any kind of a false reading or anything along those lines. Um, once you've verified that you've got good voltage, now good voltage is generally plus or minus 10% of whatever the recommended uh, voltage is for the motor, so 120, 230, depending on what you're operating at, um, which it would more than likely be 230 volt uh, if you've got overloads in place. <laughs> so. Um, Checking that that voltage is, is good is going to help, uh, help to eliminate that as a possibility. The next thing that you're going to want to take a look at is uh, those overloads are, are very heat sensitive. If the box is installed in a location uh, where it perhaps sees direct sunlight or um, other, some other alternate heating source, maybe it's next to a boiler or, or who knows. Um, anyways, if these boxes get too hot, uh, the overload's gonna trip and the motor's not gonna run. So uh, you could either move the box from where it's at or uh, in the case that it's outdoors in direct sunlight, maybe uh, put some sort of an overhang or structure over the box. That way you're uh, keeping it out of the direct sunlight and keeping those overloads from tripping. So assuming that uh, your overloads continue tripping um, and the voltage is fine, then that could be an indication that we've got something wrong with either the pump control panel itself or the pump and motor or wiring connections to the pump and motor. So what we're gonna be going over here soon in this series is gonna be the troubleshooting steps using the meter to test all the individual components within a standard control box, which is a box that includes the overloads. Uh, so we'll walk through that in the next video. In addition to that, uh, if it ends up being the pump and motor that's gone bad, we're gonna have that video as the last video in this series, and we'll go through all of the steps using your meter to, uh, to test for the pump and motor being bad. And and also keep in mind, even if we do those tests, it is possible that uh, you're getting a bad reading just due to a poor connection. So ensuring that you've got good connections all the way to the well, and then as we pull the pump out of the ground and uh, test it once again when it's not connected to the wiring to ensure that the pump and motor is bad and it wasn't in fact just maybe a splice or something on the way down the well that's failed. So. Up next, we've got uh, troubleshooting a QD control box, which the QD control boxes are one-third through one horsepower. So stay tuned.